on Badass TV, Ron Van Cleef finds a new opponent. Heather Hunter finds a new career. The Partridge family find the Black Panthers. And we find the best way to insult your mother. Your mother breasts us so bad she says she got a little man in her mouth with shit on his shoes. Read my page of mystic powers. Here I power than the hour. Music and magic and logic like shower and badash television i say godash godash television and show division godash godash hi <laughs> welcome well, welcome 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 to another glorious episode of badass television and we have with us the king mr lee scratch Perry. in the house is jumping off lee knows magic but it's the good magic you know what i'm saying share the good magic so he's gonna make it happen tonight so don't touch the dial just stay down lee tell him what's going on out there in the whole world in the cosmos the cosmic of the logical logic is the musical magic king from jamaica jungle african jungle jungle safari Take the wild computer. He says, I am jungle safari. Atari. So I take go from Amstrad. Amstrad. Tell the Amstrad. I am mad. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron Van Cleef, the Black Dragon. 52-year-old Ron Van Cleef is a martial arts legend. In the 70s, he won the World Kung Fu and Karate Championships five times, and as the Black Dragon, he became one of the biggest stars in martial arts movies. Most people live a very mundane, boring life, so they want to see something that different styles can be used. And we are underway. Unfortunately, he came up against Royce Gracie, the twice UCF world champion, who's been dubbed the boa constrictor because of his unbreakable stranglehold. Didn't matter whether I won or lost, it was the experience of being in there with a three-time world jiu-jitsu champion at my age. It was excellent. The highlight of my career. Although Ron lost his fight, he so impressed the crowd and judges that he was asked to become the honorary prize giver. Basically, I'm very happy. I've reached 52 years old. I'm not on the wheelchair already, and I feel good. I'm sure you're all aware of the popular stereotype that black men and women are some sort of sexual gods and that we have no hang-ups whatsoever? <laughs> if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Everybody needs a little help sometimes, and Black America now has that in the shape of Dr. Rosie Milligan. She's a sweet little old lady, not unlike Dr. Ruth, and she's happy to tell us just where to stick it and for how long. With more and more black women laying their sexual demands on the table, many black men are feeling increasingly under pressure to deliver the goods. Some just don't feel up to it. But help is at hand from a woman, naturally. Okay, that's wonderful. Give yourself a hand for being here. From this small Baptist church, sexual counselor and best-selling author, Dr. Rose Milligan, teaches her sisters how to help their men. Men are eager to talk about their sexuality, what they feel. They're just waiting for someone to ask them. In the airport, I would just sit down next to anybody and say, how is your sex life? And oh, I'm glad you asked. And they just start talking. This is something that should be spoken about because it impacts on everything else. It's on snapping. Now, for those of you all out there that don't know what snapping is, snapping is basically telling jokes about each other, something that us black people do all the time. We talk about each other's heads, about each other's mama, but it's just a way to release the steam, you know what I'm saying? You know, I can, I can snap. I'm one of the greatest snappers of all time, you know? I talk about your mama. You, 
Yeah, your mama. Man, your mama's so old her titties give powdered milk. Don't even try it. You know what I'm saying? Your mama's so fat that when God was creating the world, he said, let there be. Move your fat ass out the way. Light. That's what snapping is. This is a story. Yo, man, what's up with you, man? What's up with you with your little skinny ass? What's so skinny your neck and stuff? Yeah, right. You so stupid, you stole a car and stole it for gas money. Your ass is so dumb, you got locked in the supermarket and starved to death. You better leave me alone, mister. Snapping the art of the venomous insult is back on the streets with a vengeance. Thanks in part to Snapping Gurus, two brothers and a white guy. Hi, I'm Lancelia Ivy, one third of the trifecta known as two brothers and a white guy. This is my partner, James, white guy. Yeah, fine, the cool brother. And we're here today to talk about snapping. Look at you. Your mother's so fat when she walked down the street, her ass looked like two puppies playing up under a blanket. Your mama's so stinky, the motherfucking crabs go bungee jumping off a tampon pad. Snapping refers to the African-American art of verbal warfare. In other words, it's a game of insults known as playing the dozens, where you can't touch your opponent, you can say anything you want about them, no subject is taboo, and the first person to get to the point where they have nothing else to say, or they lose their temper, that's the loser. Nigga, your mother breast smells so bad, she smells she got a little man in her mouth with shit on his shoes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's why they say your mother's a vacuum cleaner. That bitch blows, she sucks, and she carries her own fucking bag. <laughs> his mother's so stupid, I told her the train was coming, she said, as long as it don't come in my mouth. <laughs> We try to take the subject that is most personal to that individual, but for guys, the mother is the most personal subject, and that's become like the favorite jokes. The mama snaps have always been the, the, the ones that hit people. You know, I've seen people fight, man, you know, over mama. Your mother's, your mother snaps. You don't know my mother, all my father. You don't know the about them. I'm interested in your mother. A dumbass bitch. Bitch so dumb, bitch got hit by a parked car. It's a mental game, and you're going to get hit hard. I mean, they don't care if your mother just died. They're going to snap on your mother. It, just, it doesn't make a difference. If it were like a derogatory thing, and I'm standing in front of a guy, and I'm talking about his mother, and I meant it with my heart, you know, the, the next response probably wouldn't be another snap. Snapping is fast becoming the most popular form of humor in black comedy stores. You know what time it is, ladies and gentlemen? It is that time of the evening. It is time for our battle of the Snap Masters. Hey! Your mom. It's so fat, when she walk, her legs talk to each other. They say, you let me by, I let you pass. You let me by, I let you pass. You let me by, I let you pass. <laughs> Jimmy, your mother's just like a bowling ball. She gets picked up, fingered, thrown in the gutter, and a bitch still come back for more. Ooh, pow! People who snap are probably some of our uh, best thinkers who are skilled at snapping, quote unquote, are some of our best thinkers because they have quick quick responses to things. I mean, to me, Malcolm X was a snapper in a certain way because he had quick responses to things. Richard Pryor was a snapper. Muhammad Ali was a snapper. It's now such a crowd pleaser that cable channel HBO hosted a one-hour snapping special. Oh, your mom's so dumb. The bitch got fired from a blowjob. Some of the best snappers to have emerged recently have been women. Your mama. Used to work for the fine bank, but the bitch got fired for drinking on the job. Oh! It's, it's no bar as hell. It's, it's, it's the sky's the limit. It's whatever comes, comes. You know, it's, it's a lot of things where it's the oop, but in this game, it's like whatever. Currently in production is a snapping album featuring rappers Biz Marquee and Lords of the Underground. Oh, your father's so stupid he tried to call 911 but couldn't find 11 on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> your mama's so dumb. She thought that the last supper was when the family went out of food stamps. Oh, wah, 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 wah. But with the move to the mainstream, will white guys start moving in on the act? We've proven scientifically. If you read our books, watch our shows, and study hard, even white men can snap. You're so ugly. Your parents went out your baby. Okay, see, that's, that's how <laughs> right. he slowed up on a delivery. Hey, your mother's like a McDonald's over one billion serves. You can't take the white out of <laughs> More badass after the break with Heather Hunter's new career and the Partridge family's old career with Richard Pryor and the Black Panthers. Badass TV is coming back right after the break. Don't miss the revolution. <laughs> I 
after last week's show, we got a lot of letters, most of them in fabulous praise of Badass, of course. But there was just this one missive from Wayne in Birmingham. It says, Dear Badass TV, I think the show's pretty cool, but why do you have to do so many American stories? Why can't we have more about what's happening in England? Keep the faith, Wayne. All right, check this out, Wayne. This show's about action. This show is about adventure. We span the globe looking for the most entertaining stories to our viewers, okay? Now, if nothing's happening in Manchester, if nothing's happening in Birmingham, if nothing's happening in England, what the hell are we going to use on TV? You know what I'm saying? Do something. Go out. Run butt naked through the palace or something. All right? Don't get mad at me because nothing's happening out here. And don't diss my show. <laughs> get mad. Get a life, Wayne. Badass TV went to New York to meet Heather Hunter, the sexy young singer whose previous career makes even Madonna look like a virgin. Heather started out in a very different area of showbiz. She became a stripper and a cabaret performer. I'm definitely an exhibitionist. I love just showing the beauty and the art of um, your body. I love expressing myself when it comes to singing, when it comes to dancing, so when it's when I'm doing my performance, that's just a, I guess that's an orgasm in one. The search for the performing orgasm took Heather into adult movies, where her expressive performances made her something of a star. Surprisingly, she finds the ups and downs of the music business harder to handle. X-rated films is definitely easy. Um, your cards are on the table, you know what you're there for, and you're in and you're out. Um, when it comes to music business, it's definitely a harder job. Heather's now signed to the credible record label, Tommy Boy. She's currently working on her debut album with some of their best producers. I'm excited about it because besides her being media savvy or very popular with a cult following underground, she also has global appeal. And the fact that, as you can hear in the tracks, you know, she's singing, Heather's performing, and it's real music, it's the real deal. So I think it should blow up. It's like that. Heather comes into it with a very nice voice, but also has a reputation in a whole nother career. And we found that there are a lot of black music fans that know of Heather's film career. And we just plan to parlay that whole image and use that as her stepping stone into music. So no guesses as to what sort of image they're going to be going for in her first video. Well, my porn career, um definitely starting doing X-rated films and now going into the music business. Um, it's, it really hasn't um, hurt my career any bit. If anything, it's enhanced it. Back in the days when black people did get a chance to be in movies or TV, we were exploited to the fullest. You had white directors and white producers saying stuff like, comb your afro out farther, stick your lips out farther, poke your butt out. We ain't going for that no more. There's a revolution going down. You know what I'm saying? But I got a clip here of my brother, soul brother, number one, Richard Pryor, dancing with the damn Partridge family. Can you believe that? Now, Richard, I'm going to give you a pass this time. But next time, you're going to have to move on me. Right on. Power to the people. When the Partridge family get mistakenly booked at Richard Pryor's Soul Club, you know it won't be a regular episode. They seem to think they're going to work here for us this weekend. Not unless you're the temptation. You are, you sure look different in person. Pryor's Club has money problems, so it's the Partridges to the rescue with a groovy fundraising plan. We've come up with an idea, and I think it's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's sort of far out, but it just might work. Mum starts organizing a street party, and David tells us his plan to make it funky. Now I have an idea for a song. It's sort of an Afro thing. Little Danny decides to enroll some outside help from the Afro-American Cultural Society, who looks suspiciously like the Black Panthers. 
In one of the most surreal depictions of racial harmony ever, the show ends with the Partridge family saving the day with a song and being enrolled into the Black Panthers. I'm hereby making you an honorary member of the Afro-American Cultural Society. All right, after watching that clip, you know, I ain't even gonna talk about that. I got a man with me right now that would never have been caught dead dancing with the Partridge family. This is the one and only king of all reggae, Mr. Lee Perry. <clears throat> our love creator, <laughs> it's still on the equator. Sailing on by the standard. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lee, are you going to tell us a bit about your appendages here on the table? I'm fascinated by all this. What's going on? Well, these represent my flying carpet. It's my, my genie black magic boots. Right. But it's black, good black magic, not bad black magic. You have good magic and you have bad magic. Mm -hmm. So I, I present my flying carpet. These are my flying carpet. Well, where can you fly in there? I mean, I mean when I'm on the floor doing the dance, right. you know, I have to fly. So I fly with mirror energy. Right. Fly with mirror reflection energy. And also with my flying crown and um, connect to the solar light beam up there, I do magic <laughs> with my star capsule. Do you need to be wearing these all at the same time, or is it That's my of... energy. Right. I can change them fast. Uh, whenever you need a different energy, I could be a different personality. Okay. What's about the monkey in the crown? He reminds me of uh, my old grandfather, six or eight. Because <laughs> 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 we're all from the animal. Right. Yeah, our, our, um, ancestor, our ancestor, Yeah. we came from this section. They were nothing before, but tinea. Then they, they, the face of the monkey appeared. It was us from the beginning. Right. <laughs> Until the very end. Need I say more? <laughs> Lee Perry in the house. Definitely. <laughs> As your servant. <laughs> Continental Bank and the National Bank, the Bank of England, the Bank of London. I'm speaking to you from the term permanent, and these are words that permanent, and it's a prophecy fulfillment coming from a permanent. Yeah! Jay! Woo -wee -wee -wee. From the land of mystics. And from the land of magic. 